seventh consecutive year that our FM subsidiary, Alpha Meat Facilities and Management uh, Services, has been solely sponsoring this initiative as a way of consciously raising awareness and further deepening understanding of the facilities management profession in Nigeria and Africa. Amongst other stakeholders who have encouraged on this, us on this auspicious journey, we particularly appreciate you, our esteemed guests, who turn out annually to commemorate with this day with us and drive home the collective objectives of this round table. Permit me to use this opportunity to personally express our profound appreciation to you all. Thank you. The sixth edition of the Nigerian Facility Management Roundtable seeks to evaluate the opportunities in real estate markets, articulate the role of facility management in increasing and sustaining asset value for investors, enhance profitability for corporations, improve the well-being of people, and process efficiency for business. Government has no business trying to provide houses for people. That is for the private sector. What government needs to do is to create the enabling environment, physical environment, legal environment, legislative environment, that will make it easy for investors to bring in their money and for users to benefit from the services that those investors deliver. I do really want to make this interactive because as Femi said, we want to issue this communique and we want the communique to be owned by all of us. We all have an idea of what it is we would like to see happen in the real estate um, industry, especially with respect to FM. But um, I think it's vitally important that we all be given that opportunity. Do you have any thoughts towards a creative way to reduce FM? Um, we like to think experiential rather than transactional. Um, so transactional would be, you know, we want to pro uh, provide FM services, we want to sell uh, a property or we want to lease a property. Uh, whereas when you start thinking experiential, you put yourself in the shoes of the users of these properties. The big manufacturers, what do they do? They will build what they need. Smith Klein Beecham, uh, Nestle, because they're not generally there, they will have to build it to suit themselves. And manufacturers tend to do that anyway, globally. And eventually, their distribution, maybe they would then do sell and lease back so on. But for them, why hold on assets? So those things, again, we have to think about. So occupational experience, value add, is what corporates are looking for. You drill your borehole, you sink it, and someone comes and tells you, you've got, they own it, you, you, they, you're going to be levied. That doesn't make any sense. You put in a sewage treatment plant, they don't have any clues, then they come in and shut you down. So you've invested money, but yet you still have additional running costs. You build a car park, you're asked to pay so much for building a car park. It, it just doesn't add up. So your costs are getting higher, and you've got to keep running the mall. FM managers these days can no longer pitch service. You are going to pitch value. And that is where, that's where your money really is. If you, if you pitch something off the table, I can maintain your generator, whatever, I will tell you there is no way you can maintain my generator. In my own company, I have 38 engineers. I have two engineers who are director generals in, in generators. So you, you cannot come and sell to me that you have a man who, who used to work for Caterpillar. I would say the man who started Caterpillar Engineering is working here. Healthcare management cannot be well deployed without facilities management. And so my specialty of healthcare management informs me that I'm in the right place at the right time in Nigeria. So permit me to say Alpha Mid has gotten it right. And so it is important that as we amass wealth, as we work so hard every day and amass wealth, that we are healthy so that we can enjoy that wealth. Can we or can facility managers now do some kind of partnerships with discos to go from a 20% service delivery of power 
to 60 to 80. One of the areas that I found that is very interesting for people who have large consumption, 500, 1,000 hospitals and all that, are turbines. Is there a strategy where you go have wholesale malls? Thank you. When an investor comes, he looks at Nigeria. So if something happens in Lagos, he thinks he's the whole of Nigeria, he doesn't understand the texture of it. So I wanted to put that clarification about Lekki. If no country can become prosperous without infrastructure, let's forget it. If we don't solve our infrastructure deficit, we will continue to struggle. We'll just go straight to the panel on the PPP model. If we do not have the resources to develop infrastructure, so partner with people who can do it. What do you do? Release the system. Let the system work. Now, if 40% of Nigerians are seeking care in the public uh, hospitals, and yet there's no major infrastructural investment over the last two decades, it means that we are getting more impoverished, more sick as a nation, because there's no wealth creation being created. Public transport, the, the, the public buses, the half buses, they are very odd. The, 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 the lives of people, they are at high risk. If you look at the public transport, and that is business, that is business. The people who, when they want to do something, the first thing they say to themselves is, what is the best thing for Nigeria? The average person in this country will think what is best for his family. No society where you have a maximum population of greedy people, selfish people, unpatriotic people makes any progress. From what I've learned today about heaven going to the next level, uh, Nigeria is seen for a good thing to come. I think today was a brilliant day. It was really about the strategic partnership that is required between public and private sector to create the enabling environment to open up the opportunities and how infrastructure is a critical driver to making sure we can take Nigeria to the next level and that can only be done by making sure that there's great facility management so that we look after the assets and get a return on investment. It would be really nice to see things begin to work properly to see what impact FMs can make in that industry. That space really has to be dominated by FM managers because they're the ones who can make the difference at this time.